Hi and welcome to Big Dave Shed. Today I thought we'd take a look at this. It's the Maplin Raspberry Pi 2 Model B Starter Kit, which costs $49.99, although I was lucky enough to have my son buy me this for Christmas. And it's basically a complete starter kit. So before we take a look at what you actually get inside the box, what is the Raspberry Pi? Well, up until about six years ago, it was probably something that just tasted quite nice with custard. Uh, but this one is actually a full computer. If I just flip it over, you can see it's essentially a credit card size circuit board which houses a complete Linux-based computer. It uses what they call system-on-a-chip technology, so it's very similar to the type of technology that's used in cheap smartphones and tablets and so on. And its original purpose was really to provide schools with a way of teaching kids how to program. In fact, hundreds of schools do just that using um, a very simple programming system called Scratch. However, the Raspberry Pi has now gone on to become something way more than a, a cheap programming tool. It's now at the heart of literally hundreds of different projects. The kind of uses that people find for these things is quite amazing. But we'll discuss those a little bit later and also the specifications of the Pi board itself. Um, but first of all, let's take a look inside the box and see what we actually get for $49.99. Okay, let's just turn the box over and open it up. Well, it all looks very nice and tidy. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we got here is a basic user guide or quick start guide. Okay, so this is basically um, helping you to get the thing all connected and set up as a computer. And how to connect to your Wi Fi network, etc. So basically, once you follow this through, uh, you've effectively got a computer which you could actually go onto the internet with, uh, which is quite amazing when you think of uh, the price. So let's put that to one side. Okay, so we've got uh, lots of little goodies in here. So what's inside this box? <laughs> okay, we've got a power adapter. There's one there as well. Um, Okay, right, this, I assume, is for the hub. Right, so the first thing we've got here is a mains adapter. Let's try and read that. There's a one amp one, um, and that is for the USB hub, so it won't be drawing power from the Pi board itself. Obviously, that's going to be very useful for uh, projects and so on. And a LED power light there. That would effectively go into the Pi board, and that provides four USB sockets there. I gather that the, the Pi 2 and indeed the Pi 3 use USB 2. I'll just put that back in the box for now. And then we've got this one here. So this is another mains adapter, and I assume that this one would actually be used for powering the Pi board itself. Now that is a 2.1 amp, so it's 5 volt 2.1 amp, which is very good because one of the, the, uh, the things that you find on places like eBay is that you buy a, something that's rated as a 2 amp charger or mains adapter, and you quite often find it's way less than that. So that's a good thing to have. So now we've got here a that's a regular size foot or full size mouse. It's an optical one. It's got a scroll wheel there. Yep, three buttons. That's very good. Um, yeah, not very tidy, is it? <laughs> and then here we have the Wi-Fi dongle adapter. Again, that'll just plug into the Pi. And that is one of the key differences with the Pi 3, which uh, I'll discuss later, is that it's actually got built-in Wi-Fi. Actually, that, that's obviously the Pi board. Before I do that, I can just see there's some cables under here. So, let's have a look. Oh, yes. 
So what we've got here is a HDMI cable. Um, I gather that's about one and a half meters. So in old money, that's about six feet. Okay, so this is the, the power cable for the Pi board. So that's a USB there and a micro USB there. Not entirely sure on the length, but I'd say it's well over a meter. Um, so that would go with the mains adapter and power the Pi board. And that's something that's worth bearing in mind is if you buy a, a, a Raspberry Pi, it doesn't actually come with a power supply. And then of course under here, there's another box. There we go. And there we have a full size keyboard. That's a USB one. And that's actually really good. I was expecting it would probably come with a, a smaller keyboard. So if you're buying one of these things to use it as a computer, that's perfect. Especially these days. You know, I mean, I've got quite a lot of computers sitting around, but uh, a lot of people have literally just got maybe a laptop um, or even just, just a smartphone is their computer. Uh, so you probably don't have things like a spare keyboard or a mouse sitting around. So that's good. So what I'm going to do is just put that to one side. And now we'll have a look at this, the Pi board itself. Okay, that's everything out of the box. So first of all, we've got some uh, documentation here. Okay, so this is just a, a quick start guide for the Pi itself. Safety instructions. It does come in this anti-static packaging, which is good. Wow, and there we are. That is the Raspberry Pi. It really is tiny. <laughs> Quite incredible. Okay, and something else that you just see here is the micro SD card. That's quite good that it actually comes with the adapter. Um, it's a SanDisk one, eight gigabyte. Okay, so the, I do know that it, it mentions on there that it actually comes preloaded with the Noobs operating system. So basically from that you can install um, Raspbian, or Raspbian, <laughs> uh, which is based on the Linux Debian software, and that effectively turns the Pi into a computer. Uh, but you can, of course, install lots of other operating systems. Um, there's Python, for instance. Uh, there's also, if you're into the retro gaming, and in fact, that's one of my uh, interests for the, having this thing, is actually the retro Pi system. What we're doing now is just run over some of the specs of this um, system. So the Raspberry Pi, uh, this is the Pi 2 board, Model B. And so this works, as I said earlier, using what they call system on a chip technology. Uh, this one is actually made by Broadcom, um, and that's actually the BCM2836. And that houses a 900 megahertz CPU. It's a quad core one, 32 bit. And that's based on the ARM Cortex-A7, all a bit technical. Um, and I do know that actually it is overclockable to about 1.1 gigahertz. So the graphics core is also built into this, of course, and that's um, the same as the Pi 3, actually. It's a v Broadcom Video Core 4 3D graphics core. The only real difference is that this one is clock to run at 250 megahertz and I think a Pi 3 is 400 megahertz. So what else have we got on here? For a start we've got one gigabyte of RAM. Now that might not sound a lot, a lot but uh, bear in mind that this is a, a Linux based system so um, it's quite efficient. On here we have four USB ports. Now of course this is where the USB hub will come in because bear in mind that you're actually going to be using one of those for the mouse, one for the keyboard, and one to feed out to the, the hub. So that's very useful. Uh, we've got an Ethernet socket there. 
And on the side here, we've got the micro USB socket. Well, that's how we power the Pi board. There's an HDMI socket, and just along from there, we've got this um, audio output, except that it also carries video, composite video. So it really is um, very similar to the, the concept of the 80s computers, where it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a computer monitor or a dedicated monitor. You can actually just hook it up to a TV. And then we've got a couple of uh, interfaces here. So there's this one here is a camera interface. Although, of course, you can, it will work with just a regular USB webcam. And then over here, we've got the display socket. Uh, so you can hook up things like a, um, it's a DSi socket, so you can hook up like a, uh, I've seen a 7-inch touchscreen, you know, it could be the basis of a, a jukebox even. And then the final thing really is these pins here. Uh, this is the GPIO pins, all 40 of them, and that's uh, our, basically our input-output interface. So we can use that for hooking up with projects and so on. And there's also a whole wealth of external boards that connect to this. Um, so you can really expand this, you know, with relays, motors, all kinds of things. So as well as retro gaming, one of the other things I'm thinking of maybe experimenting with is that I do actually have one of the, the Maplin uh, USB robot arms, you know, which was also a kit. Um, and apparently you can hook it up to this and control that. So that might be something worth having a go at. So um, what can we do with it once we've got the thing set up? Well, as I said, there's, uh, aside from just using it as a computer, it also lends itself to hundreds of projects. You know, everything from sort of home automation, smart TV boxes, uh, you can even use this to sequence lights and so on. Obviously much more versatile than just the sort of microcontroller boards that you've got out there. So if you're thinking of uh, using this just as a computer, or maybe um, particularly for emulation perhaps, then you might consider the Pi 3 board instead, uh, which is a newer version. So the, the Pi 3 is essentially the same format, but it has... Um, a Broadcom 2837 CPU. Uh, again, it's quad core, but it's a 64 bit one, and that runs at 1.2 gigahertz as it is. The HDMI supports up to 1080p output, so that's full HD, although it uses the same uh, video core for GPU. Um, the only real difference is it runs at 400 megahertz instead of 250. And the CPU itself is a newer design. It's the Cortex-A53 core. It also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that basically gets around the, the need for the adapter. So there we have it. That's the Raspberry Pi starter kit from Maplin. And I've got to say, considering everything that you get in the box there, personally, I think that's really good value for money. Um, you know, the Pi board alone is about sort of 30, 35 pounds, depending on where you buy it. And then, of course, you've got to factor in the, the basics like power supply and so on. Everything is all here. And the fact that you get the preloaded memory card, that on its own is uh, very convenient. Otherwise, you'd have to download the Noobs package, put it on the, the, uh, the card. It's all done for you. The only thing it could do with perhaps is a bit more documentation, but you can download that, as I say, from a, a web address, which I'll put in the, the list below. $49.99, I think that's uh, very good value indeed, and it's certainly a good way of starting out with a, a Raspberry Pi. Of course, the only thing you need to add is a screen, and I've decided to make use of one of my old computer monitors, so I've ordered a, an adapter from HDMI to v, VGA. Um, and once that arrives and I've got a bit of time, I'll do another video and uh, we'll cover setting the thing up. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope you find that useful.